Justin Fields were like fifty to one. That's in sure. I don't like I don't like the Bears this year. Like I don't think the Bears are yeah. going to be very good. I'm not huge on Justin Fields, but that's a button that that you click at the price if Justin Fields is a little longer than twenty to one. And twenty to one. Twenty to one is so ridiculous. Bad. I agree. Not that he can't win. He, of course, he can win. Just that at the price, I would never make that bet. I'll give you someone else in the sixteen to one range. I love Tua Tonga Vailoa. You can't. He, it, I don't know if he can stay healthy the entire year. I don't think it's a bet you can ever make. I love Joe Burrow. Who doesn't love Joe Burrow? Also plays in the division with Lamar Jackson, Kenny Pickett, and Deshaun Watson. Maybe they don't even win the division, right? I'm down on Buffalo a little bit this year, even though I love Josh Allen. Like the Jets, the Dolphins could easily win the division. So I, I don't know that I would go there. I know that the Eagles are on paper the best team in the NFC East and that Hurts is on paper the best MVP candidate. If it's true that Mike McCarthy is going to shift this Cowboys offense a little bit and run the ball a little bit more and try and limit Dak's like mistakes and Dak doesn't throw a ton of picks this year, he's the quarterback of America's team. Where yep. the Cowboys' range of outcomes this year, like one of them is to go like 14 and 3. Like it's in their range of outcomes. I'd rather bet Dak at 16 than Jalen Hurts at 11. I think Lawrence, yep. I think you're probably right on Lawrence as being the best at that number. I, I think Dak's a little interesting as well at 16 to 1. So anyway, look, I think I just think Stafford at I think when you look at the quarterbacks in the 30 to 40 to 50 range, Matthew Stafford has the most talent of all of them. And yeah, if the, the Sean McVay gets the offense going win, again, like, 14 games, they have to win like 13 or 14 games. Win the division, terrible. man. Win, win, win 11 games, win the division. Stafford throws for 40 touchdowns, doesn't lead the league in picks. The Rams bounce back. So how is uh, he throwing for 40 touch with to who? He did it with what he did two years ago with what? They got to know back in mid season. Who else did he have? Will. Tyler Higby? Will. Will. It's. Yeah, it's, but Russell Wilson. I, I don't like Russell. I like. I think Russell Wilson's the second best quarterback on his own team. Look, I'm, these are 50 to one or 40 to one shots. This is how bad the market is, dude. These guys would be 75 to one, two or three years ago. But like, how is it not? I would never bet cousins just because I think the Vikings are going to regress. I wouldn't bet Trey Lance. Just because... Cousins. Cousins will never win the MVP because people will not. Pete Prisco wouldn't vote. People, they wouldn't vote for him. Like, I, okay. They won 13 games last year. He didn't sniff a vote. If it comes out that like, Purdy is good to go in week one, like Purdy at 40 is interesting. How ah, is, that's so short. How is, okay. I actually think like this range gives us some like pretty good candidates. I okay. disagree completely with you on Russell Wilson and Matthew. I, I don't like either of those. I like Russ more than Stafford. And like Stafford's okay. better than Russ, but like the Broncos are better than the Rams. They just are you going to throw, like, throw, throw a Kenny Pickett? I mean, well, when I'm betting MVP, I want to bet. Like, up, lean into volatility a little bit, right? Where Jordan Love, if Jordan Love is good, the Packers are going to win. Uh, okay, I, I'm fine with Jordan Love. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Like, like 40 to 1 like is could, an outrageous price. He should be 75 to 1. But I agree with you that he should be in the scope of where this in the scope of where this range has become, but the Four 75 to 1 ago, range Love is, would be 75 to 1. Yeah. And Justin Fields would that. be 60 to 1. Yeah. But I, yeah, like, I, I, I don't, with you. I don't, I don't disagree that Jordan Love. Like, what if he's awesome? And what if what the if, NFC North stinks? What if the Steelers win the AFC North and win 13 games? They get the two seed. The Kenny Pickett can't win MVP. I mean, I would, I'm not saying he's going to, but, like, yeah. I think he's more interesting than Matthew Stafford because the Steelers have a better chance of, like, of, of being the one seed in the AFC than the Rams Steelers do in the what? NFC. And I understand that. No. Yes, yes. And I no. know the NFC is worse. No. Than, the Rams will never be the one. Never. It will. They, you simulate the season 500 million times. The Rams are never the one seed. The Steelers have outcomes where they could be the one seed in the AFC. Let's talk Darren Waller for a second. I know as a the resident Giants fan here, I should probably be like really bullish on on Darren Waller. I kind of like don't know what this Giants passing offense is going to look like this year. So many like new new faces. I, I really like Jalen Hyatt. And I understand that Waller, when he's been healthy, has been a stud recently for the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders also gave up on him. And this news broke, what, a couple weeks ago? And it's not like we needed a report to say this, but the Raiders were upset that Darren Waller has been hurt a lot and has missed a lot of time. Yeah, I think if Waller yeah. plays 17 games this year, like they traded for him for a reason, right? They, they basically traded Kadarius Tony straight up for Darren Waller with how the draft picks factored in, where you would think they'd want to get him the ball a lot, right? And he's a really good player when he's healthy and he's able to stay on the field. But given the fact that the Giants have so many other new pieces now on this offense, and we'll see what happens with Saquon Barkley, which might change things a little bit. 
I, I think if you're looking at Waller, I think it, it has to be. It has to be. I don't think it can ever be an over right now on Darren Waller. I would look at that under Will on Darren Waller right now. Yeah. So, I mean, look, to put it in perspective, he only had one good year with the Las Vegas Raiders because his other good year with the Raiders was when they were in Oakland. Like, that's it's been a while. Right, they've been they've been in Vegas for three years. Um, he played eleven games in twenty twenty one, just ninety three targets, fifty five catches, two touchdowns. Remember they had Derek Carr this whole time, um, and then last year, thirty years old, just six games or no, excuse me, nine games, but forty three targets, twenty eight catches, three hundred eighty eight yards, three touchdowns. If you're banking on him playing seventeen games, if you if you knew you were getting seventeen games, then the over is easy. But if he only plays 11 games, which is perfectly realistic for what he's done so far in his career, you are going to be sweating like me with no air conditioning. I, I also, I like Daniel Bellinger as the rookie last year tight end for the Giants. Sure. I don't see how Dude, he's he not involved. Dude, he is jacked year. now. And, and, we, and, and, his, and his dad goes after, like, reporters on Twitter that, like, talk about how, like, that don't mention him as being planned in the Giants' plans for this year. And I appreciate that. Like, a father that'll defend his son. I, I, I like that. And for the Giants' offense this year, Daniel Jones last year threw 15 touchdown passes. This year, it's 16 and a half. I like the over a little bit on Daniel Jones over, pa- over passing touchdowns this year. Upgraded big time the passing core with, Dar- with obviously, Darren Waller comes in. I love Jalen Hyatt. I'm really bu- bullish on the third-round rookie from Tennessee, the Bolitnikoff Award winner last year in college, making an impact this year. And uh, Hodgins is good. They're signing like every slot receiver under the sun here. We'll see what happens with Saquon Barkley. I'm not saying that Daniel Jones is going to throw 50 touchdowns this year. I, I think DJ can hit 17 touchdowns. I'd be apt to take an over on Daniel Jones, and I'd like that under on Dak Prescott passing yards, Will. But joining us right now to talk some National Football League as we celebrate football here this week and every week on You Better You Bet is our good friend, the very handsome and the well-coiffed, we we're saying yeah. before the break, like in between Will, myself, and, and Whale, we we all we're all rocking some good lettuce on this show. I got good hair. Now Whale <laughs> is the king, unfortunately. I would like to be, I am not. But Whale Drew Dinsick joins us here on You Better You Bet on this magnificent football Monday. I want to get something on the NFC from you here. NFC East, North, South, West, something you've got here on the National Football Conferences. We've done all AFC thus far in this interview. We have about sixty seconds to go. Yeah, NFC to me screams patience. Um, I think the schedule for the Eagles and the schedule for the Niners quarterback situation for the Niners is enough that we're going to get to the halfway point of the season. And there's going to be some other team that really surprises you in the NFC, um, just based on sequencing schedule and, uh, you know, just player ratings. Uh, I think the Falcons are a potentially a team that could, you know, run away with an NFC South. Uh, at which point, you know, th- are they sitting in your presumptive one seed in middle of the season? Um, now, can the Falcons win the NFC? No, I don't think so. <laughs> but I think they could shorten enough that it makes for an op- awesome opportunity to grab some Eagles, grab some Niners in the middle of the season. Uh, Niners, to me, are the c- easiest correct division winner bet in all of, uh, even more so than the Jaguars in the AFC South. I think uh, the Seahawks are pretty broadly overrated by the market right now uh and uh the cardinals and the rams rosters to me are among two of the worst that we have seen in the last 10 years in the nfl heading into a regular season these rosters are super 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 suspect uh and i think uh you know the the niners could you know stub their toe eight different ways right out of the gate against the steelers i think they're a bet against um you know darnold might get the starting job it might be brock purdy with his you know reconstructed elbow who knows um but ultimately i'm going to have a bet on the niners to win the nfc and i want i want i would like to see that price drift uh because they get off to a slow start because of the strength of their opponents and you know just what they're doing with the quarterback position yeah, I don't know if Will was the one that moved that line in week number one. The, the Niners were a three, three and a half point favorite at the Steelers in week one. That number now sitting at San Francisco minus uh, minus two and a half. Really good stuff there from Will. I will say, I'm not even saying I disagree with this. Everyone loves Desmond Ritter and the Atlanta Falcons this season. What? Ritter me this. Are the Fal- <laughs> Dude, everyone doing like sports betting content loves the Falcons. This- I'm not even saying My it's bandwagon. I'm just saying everybody, every, including you, everybody loves it. 